Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues. He says, do you know what is pride? It is batrul haqqi wa ghamtun nas. Remember these two things and don't ever forget them. Pride is two things in Islam. According to Sharia, the definition of pride is two things. To reject the truth and to reject justice. That is the first thing. To reject the truth. That would include justice and to reject everything that is correct. That is pride. Number one. The second quality is nas, to despise people. To think lowly of people, to treat people in a very cheap way, that is pride. So these are the two things. Now we want to look into our lives. Do we reject the truth when it comes to us, male and female? The truth is what Allah has revealed. The truth in dispute is what we know the truth is. Many times people know what the truth is, but they deny it. To deny the truth is called pride. And Allah says, if you have a mustard's weight of that in your heart, you do not have a place in paradise yet. You need to go first via and come. I heard lately that there are now flights directly from Johannesburg to Colombo, mashallah. Next time it will be easier for us to travel. When you are coming via, via, believe me, it's not a joke. It's long hours and suffering in order to come to a place like this. Some people ask me, where are you going? I said, Sri Lanka. Where is that? Some people think it is in South America. Whilst others are thinking maybe it is near Malaysia, Far East Asia. The truth is, no matter where it is, for the purpose of deen, we will go. And remember one thing, as I said, and I want to make this clear. My purpose of being here is solely to make me a better person and you a better Muslim to try and become better Muslims. It is impossible to be a better Muslim without knowing what your religion teaches you and without going through it. Sometimes we know some of these points, but sometimes we need to be reminded as Allah says in the Quran. Remind, continue reminding for the reminding will benefit those who truly believe. Every day your father tells you, please don't be late for school. Please come back on time. Please eat properly. They tell you to eat properly even when you are eating properly in order to ensure perfection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Don't be upset when someone corrects you even when you are right. We have an attitude nowadays human beings. If someone says, brother, walk straight. You say, what am I walking crooked? Why do we need to say that? Someone says, brother, make sure you are eating with your right hand. Does it look like I'm eating with my left? That type of attitude a true mu'min should not have. When our parents are telling us something, when others are telling us something, we should not presume that they are telling us because we are already on the wrong side. Sometimes they are reminding us to cheer us on, on the good path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. So Allah says, keep on reminding. These reminders are there to make us better people. Remember, what was the first crime committed? It's a question asked. What was the first crime committed and who was it committed by? Let me answer the second one before the first. It was committed by Iblis. Iblis who is the Adam or should I say the head, the, the, the leader, the first of those who are rebellious. Shayateen, the, the father of the Shayateen, the head of all the devils, the head of all the Satans. He was Iblis. He committed the crime. And what was the crime? It was Al-Kibru. Kibr meaning pride, haughtiness, the feeling that I am better. That is part of despising people. When you think cheap of people, you will reject them. If for example, every day we look at someone and spit in his direction, may Allah protect us. One day, one day, when he has developed some scientific discovery that he has found and developed a, an apparatus that is very very grand we might say no not him it must be someone else automatically why because we are used to despising him every day we are used to thinking very low of him this is why allah says we are equal listen to the hadith 
people are equal like the teeth of a comb you cannot comb your hair with one tooth this way one that way one tall one short one big one small what will happen to your hair you won't be able to comb it so people are equal like the teeth of a comb here you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us he says وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ When we, or remember when we instructed the angels to prostrate to Adam, when we created man, they all prostrated besides Iblis. أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ he refused and he was proud and arrogant istikbar he chose to be haughty arrogant and as a result he became one of the kuffar kuffar meaning he disbelieved in allah he disbelieved because when allah instructs you and you reject the instruction there are two things that happened here with Iblis. Both the qualities we mentioned of pride are present in what we spoke about Iblis. Firstly, he refused to listen to the haqq, to the truth from Allah, knowing that Allah is the creator. When Allah was the creator and the instruction came, it was his duty to surrender to it. But he chose not to do that. Secondly, he despised Adam and he said, who is this? Who is this? Why must I prostrate to him? For what? He is worse than me. Look what he says in another verse in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf. He says, Ana minhu. Min nari wa min I am better than him. You created me from fire and him from soil. I, my, I burn above. He settles on the ground at the bottom. If you take fire, you light it, and you put soil or dust on the other side, dust remains on the ground. But what will happen to the fire? It begins to blow up, and it, the, the, the flame actually goes in the upward direction. So this was used by Iblis to justify I am better. He had both of these bad qualities in him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. And this is why we say the person who has the quality of despising others and thinking cheap of others, either because they are darker in complexion or because they are not that good looking or because they are not that wealthy or because they don't have that much knowledge or because their education is not that much. If we think lowly of them, we have in us a quality of the devil and Satan himself. If we do not check the quality and do not remove it, and it requires a great effort to remove the quality, there may be a day that will come when we will regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So even if people are working for you, we treat them as equals. We might have to be above them to issue instructions, but with respect. When there are people working underneath you, or should I say under your authority, it is important for you to instruct them what to do because you are the boss. There is no harm for you to be the boss, but instruct them with respect. Don't treat them in a cheap manner. You also need to call them sir, how they call you sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Treat them with good words. My brother in Islam, if he is a Muslim, my brother, today we need to achieve this. Please, it is a deadline. We must achieve it. If you will not be able to achieve it today, there may be a penalization here. Look at how hard the words are, but they are polite in the sense that firm but polite. We are firm because we have a deadline to meet for our company, but we are polite because we are speaking to a human being. If Allah wanted, the tables could have been the other way around. Maybe your children might be working for his children the other way around. It can happen or later on we need to understand. Let us commence or start this trend of respecting one another and understanding that if Allah wanted, we could have been in the other's shoes and inshallah we will be assisted in solving the matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when we choose people, to be the highest we ensure that they don't have in them quality of pride and haughtiness no quality of pride they will never reject the truth 
They will not be too proud to accept what is right. They will not want to be higher than where Allah has put them. They will not seek to degrade others. No. So who are the best of people? If I were to ask you who is the best person to have existed in this dunya, what is the one single name we can say? We can say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that we have the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have five of them, five of the highest. They are known as Ulul Azmi min al rusul Ulul Azm are the five who are higher than the rest of them. Right at the top we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter we have, listen to the verse. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمْ Those are the other four. So we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa. May peace be upon all of them. So those were the highest of the lot. The, all the messengers were high, but these were higher than the others according to what we have learnt in the Quran. But Allah says they were not proud, they were not arrogant. Look at Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He was an orphan child, so he knows what it is like to be without a mother and a father. Then he was looked after by his grandfather. Then he was looked after by his uncle. And Allah blessed him with prophethood. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah blessed him with prophethood and this is hope for those who are young and who might be orphans and those who are downtrodden don't worry it is those type of people whom Allah chooses to go far beyond the others when Allah chooses someone it does not necessarily mean he gives them the dunya sometimes he gives them deen he gives them religion not necessarily the worldly material life so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here Regarding Isa or Jesus may peace be upon him in Surah An-Nisa. Jesus may peace be upon him was not too proud and arrogant to accept the fact that he was a mere slave of Allah. He was a worshipper of Allah and even the angels, they are not too arrogant and proud to deny the fact that they are, mess they are messengers of Allah and they are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to use the word slave is not easy, but we are all slaves of Allah. We must not be too proud to confirm and admit that we are the slaves of Allah. Our hands and our feet and our necks are in total control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wants, he can paralyze us. If he wants, he can grant us good life. May Allah subhanahu wa 